I totally understand that this reaction might be coming from left field, but hear me out first. There's a reason why I want to react to this movie. What's up guys? I am back for a new reaction, new commentary, and new review video. And this time around, the movie that I will be reviewing <laughs> is Daredevil. And not the TV show, not just yet, the movie with Ben Affleck. <laughs> uh, yeah guys, I know it is not a beloved movie, but the reason why I want to react to this first it's because I had an idea the other day. I was thinking about a new series that I could do uh, specifically for a TV show. And there is this one TV show that I have yet to watch that I heard was really good. And it's the Marvel Daredevil show that appeared on Netflix. I know it ran for three seasons. And I know it's highly regarded as being a great Marvel TV show. And a lot of fans were pissed that it didn't get renewed. And Netflix canceled all the Marvel stuff. And it's just something going on between Disney having the rights now. And then Netflix uh, having to take off those shows and stuff. I don't, I don't know what's going on. But I just know those shows are done with. But I know... That show is regarded as being very entertaining and very fun, and a lot of fans and audience members who watch the show loved it. And I want to do a reaction on that series, and I think it will be really fun. I, I'm going to watch the first season uh, coming up really soon. Really soon I'm going to be reacting to the first season, and I hope you guys are looking forward to that. But in the meantime, yes, I'm going to be reacting first to the Ben Affleck Daredevil movie. I feel like you just need to... Maybe watch the original first. I don't, well, not really the original, but the, the movie that came beforehand before I react to the TV show. I just thought it would be best for uh, the reaction channel. And maybe you guys will get a kick out of it as well. But yeah, guys, that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be reacting to the 2003 movie starring Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner, Daredevil. I've, wa I've watched parts of it a long time ago, never all the way through. I know Colin Farrell is in it, uh, as well as Michael Clark Duncan, the late great Michael Clark Duncan, um, uh, playing Kingpin. And yeah, that's, that's all I really know. I know the characters are kind of really far out there. Maybe not the best uh, Marvel villains. Well, I mean, they are villains that we know and love from cartoons and comics and stuff like that, but maybe not the best portrayals on screen, if I'm being honest. But yeah, I, I, um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm looking to get a kick out of it, and I hope you guys are too. And uh, so I now filled you in on what my thoughts are for coming for the future in uh, reacting to the Daredevil TV show, and we'll get to that very soon. But first, like I said, Daredevil 2003. But you know I'm here. You know what I'm about to do. React, commentate, as well as after the movie, give a little short review and see how the movie holds up to today's standards. And I think this will be a fun time uh, trying to uh, see how well this movie holds up at the end of it. But uh, we'll talk about it when we get there. But yeah, guys, uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into it. Daredevil 2003. Okay, so in the 20th Century Fox Marvel lineup, uh, the rights that they owned a long time ago, it was X-Men, Daredevil, and what else? Spider-Man? Spider-Man uh, 20... Or, no, that was Sony. Honestly, that's crazy. Like, Marvel just honestly went different directions um it went to other so many production companies i really can't keep track but i know 20th century fox did own x-men but what else yeah i don't know it was, it was just a thought that came to mind because this is 2003 so this is so long ago to be honest i'm getting kind of uh spider-man uh toby mcguire vibes from the opening of this just a little bit I like how they put uh, the Daredevil name in Braille. Hmm. Was this rated R? I don't think it was, was it? There's uh, Ben Affleck before he was Batman. It's kind of cool to see actors take on um, comic book roles that weren't so great. Like Chris Evans in Fantastic Four, uh, Michael B. Jordan in Fantastic Four, uh, and then they get um, redeemed with their newer roles like uh, Michael B. Jordan in Black Panther or uh, Chris Evans as Captain America and, uh, as we know, Ben Affleck as uh, Batman. I don't know if I'm uh, feeling the suit too much. Kind of makes him look like a, I don't know, like a demonic biker. My dad's going to be champ. Your dad's a bum. Yeah, 
Your dad's a bum. <laughs> what? What a bunch of assholes. My father was a boxer. Hmm. A sports writer once wrote that he fought like the devil. Hmm. Now we know where he got his uh, superhero name from. I told you I didn't want you fight. Huh. I tried to walk away, like you said. But they kept giving me shit. No curse. Hmm. What kind of shit? He has, um, um, God, Jesus fight. above his bed, so I guess he's a religious person. You don't hit nothing with books, get me? You'll be a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> don't be a fighter. Dad. I feel that's like what every boxer says to their kid try, uh, to not make them follow in their parents' footsteps. Don't be a boxer. Um, I mean, that was in Rocky too, wasn't it? I think there was a line like that uh, where Rocky was all like, yeah, you don't need to be a boxer or don't fight or, yeah, I fight so you don't have to. Something like that. I don't know. I just feel like boxers always say the same thing. Well, he's just saw a biohazard, so he's not blind yet, so something's gonna happen. Oh. Is he like a hitman? Oh, well, this is how it's gonna happen. Oh my gosh. Dude! Seriously? Wow. Every superhero has their origin story. Oh, he is super hearing. That's cool. These are pretty cool powers. I'm blind. Hmm. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's a funny line. We made each other a silent promise to never give up. Oh, is he gonna box? Nice. My nice throw. With oh, okay. Okay, kid. <laughs> Freaking uh, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao combined in one? <laughs> above the roar of the streets. Oh, that's really smart. My body and my senses. <laughs> uh, there he is. There's his cameo. I remember that. I remember seeing that scene. Kick his ass, man? You're going to tell that... To your friend who wants to fight a blind kid? <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. I don't work for you no more, Fallon. Jack, you never stopped. Uh. Did you really think... I feel like in the early stages of, like, comic book movies, really, production companies didn't know how to handle them. And I think that's why a lot of comic book movies in the earlier years did not do that great. Because, like, I don't know. I just, I just guess production companies didn't know what audience to direct them towards and just like how to shoot them and like if they should rely to make it or uh to make it more uh comic book realistic or like more realistic and like mo cinematic movie styles i don't know it's just yeah um i think this is a clear example of how production companies didn't really didn't know how to handle comic book material so if my memory serves me correctly i'm I'm recalling, because I, I remember seeing this scene, I think he was told to throw this fight, and I don't think he does, and I think that gets him in trouble. I think that's what my memory is telling me. See? Exactly. Dude, that was too easy for him. Yeah, I think he was supposed to throw the fight. He was in, uh, the dad was an officer and a gentleman. I remember that. Uh, I forgot his name, though. Oh, crap. See, I knew it. I knew he was going to get in trouble for this. I wonder if he's going to seek vengeance on that guy. It would make sense. Whenever you lose a parent, man, that's, that's a feeling that, I don't know, I feel I could never describe. Oh, so he didn't die. So we're back at present time, right? Huh. So, to tell him what to, to wear for that certain day. Hmm. So, he has his ways to know what type of bill he's using, what type of clothes he's wearing, what accessories to put on. Huh. Oh, <laughs> John, I forgot he was in this. John Favreau. Wow. What the hell? For your sake, 
Sound like a threat. <laughs> Let's go get drunk. Damn, man. Okay, you're just gonna break that? I feel uh, those workers kind of need that to work on that building. Kind of messed up, don't you think? What do you want? Justice. Oh shoot. Dude. So maybe not the approach Batman would take, but uh, kind of similar. Damn. <laughs> Use him as a skateboard. I could already tell off the bat the the computer graphics for this. The yeah does not hold up. Is he gonna kill him though? That's the one thing I want to know. Because superheroes don't really do that. But what is Daredevil, though? He is a superhero, right? He's not an anti-hero. Hmm. It's like nunchucks. Dude. No, come on. Not gonna happen. You first. Uh, I knew that was going to be a similar line. No way. That's not heaven. It. Dude! Oh, God. So, okay, so he doesn't have a rule like Batman or like any other superhero that I know of. He's fine with killing people. Oh, shoot. Oh shoot. Well, look at that. Kind of reminiscent of uh, the crow. I don't know if I agree with his uh, type of, uh, what, how should I say, vigilanteism. <laughs> He's kind of a killer. But, uh, I mean, like, I, what that guy did, I get, guess, was pretty bad, so, I don't know. Did he deserve it? I guess uh, Daredevil was the one to make that judgment. What the hell is happening here? This is an interesting movie, guys. I don't know if I hate it or if I am kind of intrigued. I, I still haven't really grasped the the feel for this movie. The if it's like so bad, it's good, or I don't know. My only question though is, where's Spider-Man? Wait, what? Is a fish, man. Did you know that? Because I sure as hell did. Yeah, well, I go salsa dancing on the weekends, but I don't shake my ass to pay my phone bill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the thing. What is your problem with Funny. our clients? We have, we have good, honorable clients, decent people. What's your idea of better? To define better. Huh? What would be a better client? For Wait, you? what? He gave him mustard for his coffee? Oh, here's his future ex-wife. Oh, look at her eyes. They're green. That's interesting. Oh, he switched the cups. I was just looking for some honey. Could you help me out? What are you blind? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Friend of yours. You know, I've never seen her before. Nice to meet you, Matt Murdock. Nice to meet you. Oh, uh, not gonna tell her and tell him is her name. I didn't give it. Happy in uh we have to be in the courthouse future Bruce Wayne. In one room. It's just cool to see uh, actors in the past, like, come together in uh, different movie roles. Oh! Dude! Grabbing, grabbing a woman's hand without her, uh, okay? Wait, what? Okay, this is where it's kind of losing me. I think I remember this scene. I don't remember watching it, but I remember hearing about it. What? All right, this is where the movie's losing me. Uh, <laughs> try asking for my number. All the kids are watching. It's not a fight. 
it's like they're, I don't know, what are they doing? It's just like some sort of way to show affection towards one another. Wow. Playing really hard to get. I'll find you. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> this honestly, this took really a weird turn. <laughs> and that's uh that's Kingpin's theme song. I'm an outlaw. <laughs> well, Michael Clark Duncan is a big dude, so uh this role does kind of fit him. <laughs> Oh shoot! Um, he's in a show I watch now. Um, uh, The Chosen. And he's uh he's Electra's uh, father. He was also in Mr. Deeds and just he's been in a bunch of movies I've seen him in. Never a huge role, but uh, I know he, I recognize his face. But yeah, he's in the show The Chosen right now. And wow, it's cool seeing him in this role. I would have never guessed him to be the father. Doesn't look anything like uh, Jennifer Garner. <laughs> How's your daughter? That's a weird thing to say. Her name's Electra Nachos. She sounds like a Mexican appetizer. <laughs> 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 Father's Nicholas Nachos. The billionaire? What do we got? Oh, this one's a real winner. Hmm. Dante Jackson, ex from Queens, charged with the August 9th murder of Lisa Tazio. What does he do for a, a living? <laughs> Coolio? That's funny. Julio's been in a couple now, um, uh, comic book roles. He was in, uh, Batman, uh, Batman, be uh, no, Batman and Robin, and now Daredevil. But what was I saying? No, what, what does, uh, uh, Murdoch do for a living, like, uh, to make money? Because, like, he said, uh, we saw in the coffee shop that his, uh, his clients barely pay him anything. How does he get by? Does he steal money? What's he do? I'm kind of curious. <laughs> oh, and here's uh, Colin Farrell as Bullseye. And we're going to see him now get redeemed and see if the, he can play another villain. Because he's going to be in the, the new Batman movie. He's going to be um, Penguin. That's crazy. Honestly, Daredevil is a movie about redemption for the actors. <laughs> ben Affleck, Jon Favreau, Colin Farrell... Oh, that's pretty interesting. Looks like it's branded on his head. Yeah, this movie is losing me now. The beginning was okay. With the dad and him as a kid and his uh, origin story about how he became blind and that he has special powers. And, um, yeah, he's just... It was a cool... I, I was kind of with it in the beginning. Now, you're lo now I'm not really getting it. Yeah, because you're still wearing your necklace, bracelets, earrings... And the dog does nothing. It's scared of him. You know what Colin Farrell looks like? He looks like a reject from the Matrix movies. Look, Matt, I know you got this built-in bullshit detector, okay? But this time it's on the blink. And let's just say for argument's sake that Jackson is innocent. He is innocent. Okay, then why is somebody going through all the trouble of setting him up? Why the big cover-up in the death of a, a, a prostitute? I don't know. Ooh. Damn. I'm gonna pick the lock. This doesn't seem like your average lawyer. Oh, that's who we saw earlier. Okay. Making sense now. She was shot here and dragged outside to make it look like a random robbery. Damn, that uh, biohazard, uh, that toxic stuff that went into his body really gave him a lot of uh, different powers. She wrote something here in a ballpoint pen. The imprint is still in the woods. There, I knew it. Her mother did it. Now, Her mother did it. This looks like a bigger and a nicer courtroom than the one he was in earlier. It was a block away when I got the call of shots being fired. When I arrived on the scene, Lisa Tazio's body was lying Oh, is he going to he's going to listen to his heart, huh? I found Jackson passed out in the alley. Oh, he is. Oh, never mind. Okay, so that's a normal heartbeat. Clearly I don't listen to hearts, so I'm not familiar with that. So does this mean you want a rematch? Uh. Wow. Oh, maybe she does like him. By Kingpin? 
really uh, interesting uh, start of their relationship. Now, if that's not a sound set or a production studio, I have no clue what is with that rain <laughs> just dropping out of nowhere. Mm, maybe this is where they fell in love in real life. Oh, he works for Kingpin. It's kind of reminiscent of his father, too, what we saw in the beginning of uh, the dad beating up some guy. Um, yeah. And here he is. Dude! Ooh. Guess he's gonna have to knock Kingpin's head off then. He is a kid. You look like the bad guy. I mean, that's a scary suit. With horns on the top of your, uh, cowl. Dude, you look like a killer. Y you do look like a scary dude, man. If I saw you in a dark alley, I would turn the other way. So we'll be seeing you Sunday then, huh? Hmm. Probably not. This just came by messenger. It's your invitation to the black and white ball at the Grand. That place is going to be crawling with people. Rich people. Yeah, people new clients. With money, not with fish. <laughs> not with fish, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sports supplies. And Nachio owns the Grand Hotel and lectures the reason you were invited to the ball. She's out of my way, and I'd rather just end it before it starts. No, nope, I missed it. Kind of record, Matt. You just completely bypassed the whole relationship phase. You went right to the breakup. <laughs> Gonna miss again, dude. You suck. Swish. Look, Matt. Seriously, the ball's in your court. Damn. Is he gonna shoot it? If he makes it, dude. If he makes this, of course, of course. <laughs> Yeah, so they're just gonna totally bypass of what John Favreau was talking about. I don't know if you would want to work for him, though. Yeah, why is that? <laughs> wow, straight to his face, too. Not even scared. Nobody's innocent. Exactly, I knew that was going to be the line. But damn, Michael Clark Duncan is freaking tall as hell. How tall was he? 6'5", six, 6'6"? Six, six? Oh, there's her father. Wow. Dude, this guy's a dick. Ooh, what goodbye? Who's dying? Something is happening. What the hell's happening? No, don't be sorry. You have to go with your dad. Oh, but here's uh, Daredevil. Wow. I missed. I never missed. Wow. He's met his match. Finally, some action. Some computer action. <laughs> that's clearly not Ben Affleck or Colin Farrell. Oh, shoot. Catch it. Catch it. Shh. Damn. Oh, dude, he missed. Oh. Shit. And she's going to think Daredevil did it. Well, this could not go any worse for Ben Affleck. Or, uh, Matt Murdock. Dude, she lost her mother and her dad now? Yeah, you, uh, you kind of messed up, bro. Even though it wasn't your fault, you kind of dropped the ball. Dude, how thro how hard did, uh, Bullseye throw that, though? Because it went right through him. How did you get past my security? Oh, you mean that guy? <laughs> <laughs> With pencils. Kind of reminds me of uh, the Joker pencil trick. I know, like, yeah, Kingpin has got off uh, totally free. Nobody's suspecting him as uh, doing the job. Okay. He wants a costume, really? This is going to be interesting. Doesn't look like the costume type. Except for his apparel that's looking like a Matrix ripoff. Tavern until 10.15 and then you went to meet a friend. 
That's right. I, I, I went to meet Turk because he owed me some money. <laughs> yes. And it was there that you passed out from drinking. Is that correct? Smoking weed mostly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> found at that time holding a handgun? That's a lie. In That's fact, a lie. You don't even own a handgun, do you? No, sir. Have you ever owned a handgun, Mr. Jackson? No, sir. You can't hit nothing with a handgun. Uh Oh my god, dude, you're making your case worse. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Oh my god. Yes, shut up. What do you want? Your client's innocent. Is there anything that you can tell me that can help my client? Shh. He sold a 500 SL to a Robert McKinsey Well, but uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, Murdoch already know that he was innocent? He heard his heartbeat. Oh, but then he heard the cop in the in the courtroom. His heartbeat was also not beating fast, so he was also telling the truth. So he thought he was wrong, huh? Hmm. Wow, he's taking his job to a whole new level with this. So the cop was lying. Oh, oh, so his heart... Oh, damn, man. I didn't see that coming. That is the biggest reveal in this movie so far. Well, now won't he, like, cry to the police or something and uh, say that Murdoch tried to kill him? What's that note? Oh, that? That's Matt's big contribution to the Tazio case. What's the date of the murder? August 9th. Or maybe you're looking at it wrong. Wow. Well, look at that. Secretary knew more than uh, Favreau did. Oh my god! I didn't know he was in this. Dude, that's funny. He's a huge comic book nerd, so it only makes sense. And, and Ben Affleck is like a close friend of his. That would, this totally makes sense, but I did not see that coming. Kevin Smith. Have you seen this? Ooh, he's blind. Dude, I remember this song so vividly. The music video, too, of her, like, out on the ledge. And then the guy holding her hand. and Oh, my gosh. Bringing back childhood memories for me. So she's going to be a vigilante now, too. Awesome. I think this falls under the category of having too many characters in one movie, though. I feel that's at fault for a lot of comic book movies, as you could see from Amazing Spider-Man 2, which had a huge problem with too many characters it had in the movie. And this one very much so has a lot of characters. Kingpin, Elektra, um, uh, Bullseye. Yeah, too many villains. Where's Bullseye? Colin Farrell is really over the top with this role. This is kind of making me excited to watch a TV show, though, now. The TV show is well-loved, so, yeah, could only go up from here. Oh, my gosh. He didn't do it. Delight. <laughs> Stupid. No, oh, this will be quick. Ow. Damn. Are you happy now? Is she gonna take off his mask? Wait, so does she know? Does she know that he didn't do it now? Oh, like, what? Oh, okay, so she believes him now. After revealing that he's Matt Murdock. I, I don't know how that works, but apparently it does. Hey, Orphan. Ooh, nice catch. Oh, shoot. Ow. Oh, shoot. Bullseye. Oh, shoot. That hurts. That hurts. That hurts. Damn, Bullseye's an ass. Ooh, damn. He's not holding back at all. Yeah, you're not better than Bullseye. I mean, I feel like you need more training to be. Is he gonna kill her? Oh, shoot. No, 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 no. She dies? But she has a sequel movie, doesn't she? Doesn't she have her own takeoff movie, Elektra? So how does that work? You know what this actually made me think about is Ghost Rider. I don't know who owned Ghost Rider. I think it was Sony or Fox or something. I don't know. But the Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider movies. I think Nicolas Cage is due for a, 
redemption in the comic book uh, movie role. Oh, shoot, Bullseye. Can't do that in a church, man. Damn, so he has to take on Bullseye and Kingpin. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot. Oh, shoot. Whoa, dude. That hurts. He honestly really doesn't miss. Bullseye and Hawkeye should meet. Have they ever met in the comics? That would be cool to see them fight. Ooh! Oh, Batman's coming in? Batman makes an appearance in this movie? I mean, the choreography is not bad, though. For uh, this 2003 movie... Oh, you're out of ammo. <laughs> the way Colin Farrell reacts to these things. I'm oh, finding more ammo now. Kind of reminiscent of the Spider-Man Green Goblin scene in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Sound. <laughs> Daredevil should meet uh, Venom. They both don't like sound. Yeah, he's uh, putting up a fight. <laughs> he loves that shite. Oh, shoot. This guy's behind, behind the whole killing of everybody in this movie. Oh, shoot. Sniper. Ooh, nice. It went through both hands. Damn. He's got crucified. Goodbye. He's gonna fall on that guy's car, huh? Yep. Yep. Everything leads back to Fisk. He's a corrupt guy. That's how he got all his money. Damn. Look at the size difference. And Ben Affleck's not even that short, is he? He's like 6'3", isn't he? So... Michael Clark Duncan has to be above 6'5", 6'6". He's just eating those punches. Okay, this is a serious question, though. Does um does Fisk in the comics have any real powers? Because I know he's like this big brute of a guy, but does he have any like superpowers too? Like uh, I don't know, compared to uh, Green Goblin or like uh, Electro or um, I don't know, just any of the Marvel villains? Because I feel like he was just a human guy who was just really born big. Ooh. Now he knows who he is. The blind lawyer from Hell's Kitchen. Uh. Here's his advantage now. Water. Now he can see him. Now we. Now. Okay, now he's capable. Oh, nice. Ooh, dude. Ow. He didn't do it though, did he? Yep, he didn't. He's all like, oh, I missed. Let's try that again. Hmm. I'll be waiting. Eh. So they wanted a sequel out of this. Oh, shoot. They wanted a sequel out of this. But never got it. <laughs> that sucks. I mean, but it only serves them right. Because, yeah, this, uh. I won't say this movie was a letdown. But, I don't know. Oh, he got off. Good. Nice. They got Coolio off. <laughs> Keep it real. Going back to church. Is he going to go to the next service? Maybe. What? What is it? He's not going to do it, though, is he? Dude. He's not going to do it, though. I guarantee he's not going to do it. Oh, he's mad. He's big mad. It's Bullseye. He didn't die. Yep. There you go. Oh, poor Fly. Uh, her necklace. It's in Braille. Where is she? Don't do it. Come on, man. Don't do it. But until that day comes. Yep. Nice. You need to get paid still, though. What are you going to run? Go get him, man. Hell's Kitchen is my neighborhood. I prowl the rooftops and alleyways at night. I would like him to meet Spider-Man, though. That'd be a cool encounter. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about it. We, we can save my comments for uh, the review. 2003's Daredevil. 
directed and written by Mark Steven Johnson. Starring, well, as we saw, Ben Affleck. Yeah, guys, we wrap that up. And my thoughts coming right out of the gate. There is a reason why a lot of people do not like this movie. I can totally see that. And I am not faulting anyone for not liking this movie, including myself. I'm not saying I hate it. I'm not saying it's the worst comic book film adaption ever made. But it certainly is not ranked up there as one, being one of the best or most memorable um, comic book adaptions. As I said in the beginning, the beginning of the movie was fine for me. We got to see his origin story of how he became Matt Murdock, the guy who uh, is blind but fights evil, right? Or uh, bad guys with his uh, red cowl and uh, red jumpsuit. And that was okay with me. Uh, we saw his uh, journey into his... Uh, figuring out how to get by with his day-to-day -day life as being a blind kid, and also honing his skills of combat, as well as his senses, his uh, new, uh, newly found senses, if you will. Um, just the senses that kind of uh, were heightened from his um, accident with that chemical waste thing that spilled onto him. And I was fine with that. I mean, like, it wasn't the best way to tell an origin story, but it also wasn't the worst. And I thought it was okay, especially for an early adaption of a comic book movie. Like, because like I said in the beginning, I don't think production companies really understood what to do with these movies. And that's why a lot of early comic book movies weren't really that great or memorable. And I was okay with that. Uh, knowing that, I thought it was a fine introduction to the Daredevil comic, the Daredevil character. But other than that, once we got deeper into the story, there were just some scenes that totally threw me off and uh, lost me, if you will. Especially, as you could see in the, my reaction to the scene where Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner were fighting in the playground. That, that was just something that honestly did not fit with the movie. I take that back. It, it did fit with the movie, but didn't fit with the story. It's just like they met, they meet up, um, at a coffee bar. And then one thing leads to another. He tracks her down and she doesn't like being tracked down. And the way to get her name is to fight her in a playground with kids watching through, um, I don't know, jungle gyms and, um, what was that? That uh, teeter totters, whatever you call those things is, just... yeah, I, I wasn't feeling that scene at all. Uh, and I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of people weren't either. And just there was just we'll say Colin Farrell also his uh, his role as Bullseye that threw me off too, man. Uh, he, 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 I don't know what he was trying to do with it, but the role wasn't just it wasn't working for uh, the type of style that Colin Farrell was uh, acting in. Uh, it was just too comedic. It was just kind of funny. I know he was trying to be a badass, but it was just it threw me off. It it was just too funny for me. And uh, I don't fault Colin Farrell because he's a good actor. I've seen him in a lot of movies, and he, he brings it. And I've seen him in the trailer for The Batman as um, Penguin, and he looks like he will do a good job. He will redeem himself. But as for his role in um, Daredevil as Bullseye, yeah, man, um, I don't think there's uh, any coming back from that. I mean, I'm, well, I'm, not that I'm saying he can't come back for it, but I'm just saying that uh, there's no way to redeem that role in this movie. Uh, he, he went all over the top in this movie, and it, it was just not really that great. It was uh, Bullseye wasn't the role for Colin Farrell, to say the least, as well as uh, Michael Clark Duncan. I don't think he was a bad villain in this movie. I think, uh, given the right script, I would like to see him... Oh, rest in peace. But um, if he was still alive, I would I would be fine with seeing him in the role as uh, Kingpin again. It seems he is a very intimidating guy, and that is what Kingpin is. He's an intimidating mob boss, and yeah, Michael Clark Duncan is a good actor. So I wouldn't I wouldn't hate to see him in the role again if he was still around today. And I think he did a good job in this movie. I don't think he did horribly horribly bad as uh, Colin Farrell did as Bullseye, but he was, he went with it. He he went with what, what type of role he was given. He saw what was being put before him with the script and um, the type of movie he was going to be in, and he went with it. He didn't do anything that I feel did not fit with the type of movie he was casted in as Kingpin, because uh, we saw Elektra, we saw Daredevil, we saw Bullseye. There was just a lot in this movie, and yeah, I think um, I think Michael Clark Duncan did a fairly well job for what he was given, and honestly, he's probably one of the m more outstanding characters in this movie for me, and that's not being really nice. I feel that's just like putting it lightly that Michael Clark Duncan was probably one of the most memorable scenes in the movie given 
that we didn't really get a lot of memorable scenes in this movie. So, yeah, take that as you will. But also, Jennifer Garner as Electra. Yeah, just... It was kind of corny, man. Uh, her role was really corny to me. I haven't seen the Electra movie, so I have no clue how she got brought back to us. Because I'm pretty sure that movie takes place after the events of Daredevil. I don't think it is a prequel. Because, as we saw, she kind of had her own origin story, if you will, in this movie. She... Her dad died by the hands of Bullseye, the, who she thought was Daredevil, and she wants to get vengeance on Daredevil. So she becomes this vigilante, such as Daredevil, to defeat him. So she did have her own origin story in this movie, in a smaller scale, rather than uh, uh, what we saw with uh, Matt Murdock's origin story. So I'm pretty sure the Lecture movie is not a prequel. So it'd be... Uh, fun to know how she gets brought back in that movie. But uh, saying that, yeah, Jennifer Garner's not a bad actress, but her role in this just was pretty corny to me. It was, uh, I don't know, cheesy to the, the romantic relationship she had with Ben Affleck's Matt Murdock. Felt a little forced and not enough time to develop a relationship between the two characters. And I'm not saying that's her fault, but just the way her character is being portrayed in the movie. And uh, it just, I don't know, wasn't enough for me to appreciate her in the role of Electra. I'm nothing against Jennifer Garner. I said she's a good actress, but yeah, her uh, portrayal of Electra just wasn't for me. And also, I guess I'll mention John Favreau as well. He's fun, man. Whatever movie he's in, he's just a fun guy to have. And we can clearly see he's really respected in the Hollywood industry, film industry nowadays, being a highly regarded great director as well as uh, still uh, present in the acting world as well uh, in the MCU movies. That's happy. And uh, yeah, just John Favreau is just a pleasure to have on screen. I, I I like him. He's a he's a fun actor. He's a he's just fun to see. And he's just a funny guy. He kind of plays the same character sometimes in a lot of the movies he's been in. Um, the kind of snarky, quippy type of pain in the neck right hand man or a, a type of sarcastic character. And he always kind of plays that character. And uh, hey, if it works for him, run with it. And it seems like it's been working for him for. Uh, these uh, these past years that he's been in Hollywood. But yeah, John Favreau, he's a fun guy. But lastly, I guess I will get to um, Ben Affleck's portrayal of Daredevil. What can I say? <sighs> not not his uh, not his best role. Not his best leading man role. And I'm really happy he got redeemed with Batman. Because, yeah, he was not born to play Daredevil for at least the Daredevil movie we got in 2003. He is a badass in this. Um, he seems like he can fight uh, when we're not watching CGI or computer graphics on screen. Because this movie probably was filled with a lot of computer graphics that we could totally see. And it wasn't really hidden from us in the, in the, the movie. Um, ben Affleck's acting, uh, it, it was just, it was a B, B-rated movie, honestly, man. It's just a movie that you could probably throw on with a couple friends to laugh at it and uh, watch it and uh, have time pass. It's just a movie that you would just throw on to kind of chill, chill and vibe out, I don't know, and just to hang out with a group of friends. Nothing to really think about or uh, enjoy, for that matter. <laughs> Um, that being said, it's, it's an okay movie. I mean, I did, I did not, not enjoy it, but I didn't love it. But yeah, Ben Affleck's portrayal in this, it's, I think, I think the reason why he was just cast in this movie was just to have a handsome guy in the leading role as a, a comic book hero. And, uh, you can't really turn that down because, uh, it has worked wonders for a lot of actors. So that's probably what Ben was thinking when he went into this. But uh, he, he brought that usual Ben charm, I guess, that he has portrayed in a lot of his movies. And he didn't really go off any anything else. He didn't really uh, try to stand out anyway, like he does as Batman, in my opinion. But yeah, I'm glad he got redeemed as Batman, because this, this wasn't it, Ben. <laughs> and that being said, this this makes me look forward to the Daredevil TV show just as much. This movie didn't leave a bad taste in my mouth, but it didn't leave a great taste. And uh, I enjoyed it for what it was, but I can totally see that this is a comic book movie that should be left on the shelf and probably not ever shown in theaters or uh, a young viewing audience, for that matter, ever again. It's just a movie you probably see once and say... Yeah, I'm good. I saw it. I'm done. And that's how I feel. Maybe maybe there is a cult following for this Daredevil movie starring Ben Affleck, but I'm not one of those people. 
But yeah, Daredevil 2003. Oh, and I just looked at the rating too. It's PG-13, really. They, uh, it's pretty close to R to me, man. Um, I, if I didn't know any better, I would have uh, thought this movie was R. Because it, really, it leans right in the middle of PG-13 and R, but I think it leans closer to R, in my opinion. But, uh, hey, they got away with that PG-13 rating, so <laughs> I guess that's what they were aiming for. Uh, but Daredevil 2003, the, the script, the, the concept for this movie, I think it was just all over the place. And I think uh, the production company did not know what to really do with it because they had a lot of big comic book characters in this movie. And uh, I don't think they knew where to go from there because it was just overpacked, in my opinion. And um, I think, that in my opinion, they should have left Electra's character out, uh, Jennifer Garner. I think she should have just went on and did her own movie. And maybe if they had a sequel with Daredevil, um, they could have uh, brought her in to the sequel. But for now, I think they should have just focused on Daredevil and Kingpin's story. Maybe they could have left out Bullseye, maybe saved him for uh, at the third movie or the sequel as well. Because uh, Bullseye is like a very comic book uh, related villain towards Daredevil, right? Like uh, Daredevil goes with Bullseye as Green Goblin goes with Spider-Man, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, there's probably a lot of better stuff they could have done with this movie. But uh, maybe they just wanted to put it all on the table for the viewers since this was probably... The early earlier stages of uh, the comic book movies, uh, the the comic book fandom. So yeah, I think they just wanted to lay it out all on the table for us and see if we liked it or not. And uh, the result was uh, not a great one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's hop to it. My rating for this movie, I give this movie probably C minus. I know I've been bagging on it a lot, and uh, you probably would have thought I would have given it a D or something, but I think a C- minus is good because it did entertain me in some some aspects of this movie. Um, I think the choreography, like I said, was pretty entertaining, and I enjoyed that. I, I love a good action scene. I'm a, I'm a sucker for that. So the the choreography was cool when it was in CGI as well as the, the ending fight scene between uh, Kingpin with Daredevil. And uh, the fight scene between uh, Bullseye and Daredevil. I think those were pretty badass, and I think they were fun. And uh, I think, yeah, besides the acting, I think Ben Affleck pretty, uh, kicked ass in this movie. But uh, the acting just wasn't there for me. But yeah, C- minus for me for this movie. Does the movie hold up? I'm going to have to say no. Um, I don't think this movie should see the light of day anytime soon ever again. We'll leave that to the TV show. Yeah, the CGI is not great. Computer graphics... Um, just the whole script, for that matter. It's just like, was is it action? Is it comedy? Is it romance? I don't think it really knew what it was. And it's just, I don't know. It was too many characters, like I said. But that leads me to talking about now when we get into the TV show series, which I will be reacting to, commentating on, as well as reviewing and seeing if it holds up, uh, which I'm pretty sure it does because I know a lot of people like the show. But yeah, now we got that out of the way. Daredevil 2003. We are done with that. And now we're on to the TV show. And I'm really looking forward to that because I know a lot of people love that show. And I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well because I am always happy to be reacting and commentating on a new video. But yeah, until then, until I uh, react to the first episode of Season 1 of Daredevil, if you like the video, maybe hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. As always, helps me uh, know that you are enjoying my content that I'm producing for you guys. And... Uh, uh, even a better thing that you guys could do is uh, maybe hit that subscribe button. If you uh, really enjoy this reaction and commentary and review, I think uh, subscribing would be next best thing for you guys to do. And it would just notify you when I post a new video. And uh, after that, it will be very simple for you guys. You won't have to do a, a darn thing after that. <laughs> so I would really appreciate that. Uh, lastly, maybe leave a comment what you guys really think of Daredevil 2003 compared to the TV show. Just let me know. Um, let me know how well the Daredevil movie holds up to the TV show. And... Uh, if uh, Ben Affleck's portrayal of Daredevil is really not as bad as I'm making it seem, if you actually like him in the role, or just uh, your thoughts, leave down in the comments what you guys are thinking while watching me react to this. But yeah, guys, other than that, I hope you are all having a great day, as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.